Welcome to our podcast on solution development. This will involve a discussion about the different packages that we use in the computer application technology subject, like word processors, spreadsheets, databases, and web design. These topics are from question eight of the 2024 Computer Applications Technology November Theory Exam. There are three ways that you can engage with the content of this podcast. If you want to test your knowledge, then download the questions covered in the video by getting a PDF with the questions from the link in the video description. Then you can attempt these questions and then come back and listen to the podcast and compare your answers. Or if you want to use the podcast to learn new information, then first listen to the discussion, then download those questions that we mentioned earlier from the PDF in the video description, and then test yourself to see how much you remember from this discussion. Or you can simply enjoy the discussion and learn more about solution development. So now let's hear what our podcaster has to say about all these different packages. Welcome to our podcast on solution development, where we're going to look at some of the features from Word, Excel, Access and HTML. So let's cover a couple of questions that can give us some more insight into the wonderful features of these software packages. So let's start off with a simple one where we talk about a word processing feature that will allow the user to format the headings in a document at the same time. Now, if you know about styles, then that's a very useful way to make sure that you have a consistent look and feel for all your headings or your text. And then if you want to make changes, you just have to modify a particular style. So styles is the answer to that question. Now, another feature in word processes is tab stops, which can be used to align text neatly in columns. So we're going to ask, name two features that can be used to set tab stops in a word processing document. Well, you can do it two ways. You can go to the ruler of the document and you can actually click on the ruler and give particular tabs. Or you can just go to the tab settings. Either one will allow you to add tab stops. And there you can see an example of the ruler with some tabs attached to it. Now, another feature of tabs is to have a leader line. There you can see in our example, there's those little dots leading between AP and the number. Now, why would you add a leader line? Well, straight away, you can see it's a lot easier to read. If you have lots of things in a list, you can see that AP goes to 10.56. It makes it a lot easier to read. It improves the readability. It makes it easier for your eyes to go across between the tabs. And then sometimes you could actually use it to create, for example, dotted lines where you want to sign or put the dates. So some people use those tab stops to create those little dots if they're going to print that document so that someone can then sign on the dotted line. So those are very useful features of using the leader lines in the tab stops. Now let's move on to this screenshot. There you can see a list for an agenda and they ask us what processing feature has been used to create this list. Now you might be tempted to say, well, it's obviously numbering because you can see the one, two, three, four, but there's a different numbering style when you go to A, B for the second level and the third level is R's. So this is probably a multi-level list. And then they then ask that 15th of July, 2024, you'll see that it is not listed on the agenda as number four. It's underneath number three. And it's asking why is it not listed as number four and how could we add it as one of the listed items. So let's pretend minutes of the previous meeting was one item and then the 15th July 2024 must be its own item. Well, the thing is they've used at the end of minutes of the previous meeting, they've used a soft enter or a shift plus enter. And you can see that by that little symbol over there. So when you do a soft enter or a line break, that 15th of July 2024 is considered part of the paragraph of minutes of previous meetings. So it's one item. So it's a way of putting stuff on a new line, but keep it attached to the previous paragraph. If you wanted 15th of July 2024 to be on a brand new item list, so it must be number four and planning must be number five, then you would have to use a proper enter or paragraph break to be able to make that and not use shift enter. So that's how you would create that as its own list. Now let's get stuck into HTML. You might have these two tags in a table, a TH and a TD tag. Now what's the difference? Well, the TH is normally used for headers and any text that you put in the TH cell tends to be bold and centered, but the TD tends to be normal cells in the table that you can just put normal text in. So the key difference is TH is normally used as a header, normally at the top, and it's bold and centered where the text in the TD is normally just normal text that you can add data to the table. Now let's move to databases. There are fields in a database table consist of various data types. Explain when an OLE object data type will be used. Well, the most commonly used 
feature used for OLE objects tends to be when you've got an image or file that you want to refer to. You can link it or embed it, sometimes even a video. So when it's an external file that you're actually referring to, then you want to use an OLE object. Now, speaking about data types, what about text? Can we name two data types that can be used for text? Now, the most common ones, if you remember about your database design, is the short and long text or the Mr. Long text. So if you've got something, for example, that's 255 characters long or shorter, then you might want the short text. If you've got something that's very paragraph based or lots of text, you might want the long text. But technically, you could also use the lookup. A lookup gives you a list of options and you, you could use text as part of those options. For example, if you were picking a department and the lookup said it can either be marketing or sales or management. So you can actually have text in a lookup as well. That's technically a correct answer. Now let's move to spreadsheets, for example. Here we've got data about an email address and a username, and they tell us to talk about functions which are combined to extract the username from the email address in the screenshot. So we've got the email address. We need to be able to get that username. Now I'm assuming they're talking about Excel here, but these features tend to also be available in databases. So let's have a look at it. Now we've got the name of the domain, which is, for example, cat educator there in the first example, and then there's at school.co.za. Now, the first two functions that I would use here is the Beyonce function, I mean the left function, to the left, to the left, and the find function. Those would be the two that I would use. So they give us a list of options. So they say left or mid or find. Let's just, let's see how we would do that. So I would straight away go to left and find. Those would be two that I would definitely use. So for example, we could do something like this where we would say copy from the Beyonce, I mean from the left, and let's pretend cat educator was in cell A3. So the first parameter would be where are we copying from? And we want to copy all of the text from the left until the position of that at symbol. So I would say find the position of the at symbol in A3. That's where the find function is. But I don't want to include the at symbol. There you can see username is just cat educator. It's not cat educator with an at symbol at the end. So I would find the position of the at symbol and then minus one. So it copies from the left up until the at symbol, just back it off one position so that it goes just before the at symbol. So the left and find would be my go-to functions to do that. You could technically use mid as well. So if we used mid, we would just copy from the middle, but we would actually start from position one and we could use the find as well. So that could also be used. So copy from A3 starting at position one until the position of the at symbol, but just back it off one position. So we don't have the at symbol in the username. And then they said in the memo, the len function. Now I'll try to figure out where they would use len function. I try to think and see where, where they're using the len function. It doesn't make sense. You don't need the whole length, but then I noticed that all the email addresses have at school.co.za. So because the email addresses are all the same or have the same ending, then technically we can use the length function. So what I would do here is I would copy, for example, from the left for A3, and I know that at school.co.za is 13 characters. You can count there. There's 13 characters there. So if we know the full length of the email address and we minus 13, then we will have the number of characters for just the front bit up until the at symbol. So that's where I would use the len function. So we copy from the left of cell A3, but we copy for the whole length of it, minus 13 characters. So for example, with maths 1, 2, 3, 4, that length is 22. But if we say 22 minus 13, we get 9, and that would give us the maths 1, 2, 3, 4 username. So that's how that would work. Now, one that's not in the memo, this is Mr. Long's answer. People don't know about the substitute function. You could use that. Now, substitute takes text and says, replace this text with something else. So we could use the substitute function like this. We could say substitute A3, so get A3, but for A3, the text at school.co.za, we want to replace with nothing. I put double quote, double quote, just there. So it will take that whole A3 and then replace the at school.co.za with nothing and you'll be left with the username as well. So that's technically an answer as well. So there we go. I think we've done all the questions for this. I hope you got some insight and saw how we got those answers. If you want to give these questions another go, then remember to download the questions in the video description and give them a try and see if you can come up with the same answers. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Now, I know this is a podcast from the Computer Terms channel, but you must go to our RT and CAT computer channel at Mislock RT and CAT to get information about all these features. So subscribe to both channels. It'll really help us out. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.